In this video, I'm gonna show you the simplest and easiest way to make a chisel wrap that I know of. Uh, now, g'day, welcome to Chestnut Nag. My name's Stuart Chignall, and it doesn't matter whether we're talking about second-hand tools that you've spent a lot of time refining the edge on, or brand new tools that you've bought without a box, or you're about to buy without a box, wink, wink. You want something to keep your chisels in inside your toolbox so those beautiful razor sharp edges don't get damaged. Now you could do this uh, with canvas or denim. In fact, uh, many traditional chisel wraps both in Japan and in the West used a heavy duty fabric. Uh, but uh, since I've got a stack of leather, I'm gonna use leather. There's blue, gray, there's yellow, there's pink, aqua, I think, I think we're gonna go for blue-gray. Now, I got this leather from a shoe manufacturer that shut down. This is stuff that I believe is just straight out of the chrome tanning vat, which is why it's this bluey-gray color. But it's been sitting around on their shelves for a long time, so it's got a bit of bleaching, a bit of dirt. But for what we want it for, with, you know, making tool covers, who cares? Doesn't matter. Obviously, we're gonna need something to cut the leather. Uh, you could use uh, a Stanley knife, box cutter, ax, whatever. You know, something really, really sharp. I've got a German leather knife, which I could use, but since this chisel wrap is going to be for some Japanese tools, I thought it'd be a good idea to use one of the Japanese leather knives that I have. It's just, I don't have one ready to go. <laughs> Look at that beautiful. I haven't really chosen the best weather for this because it's cold. I'm tough enough to enjoy. <laughs> so enough of the silly buggers, let's get started. The first thing we've got to do before we cut anything is get an idea of the dimensions that we need. Now this is a new old stock mortising chisel and it's, it's, a rel it's, it's bigger than an orinomi. Um, it's sort of more in the Atsu Nomi range, which is basically Japanese for thick chisel or big chisel. Um, they're for more heavy duty work. Yeah, and I'm gonna use this to give us an idea of how big we need the piece of leather to be. So the first dimension is how wide the piece of leather needs to be. Now you want about uh, 75 mil at the bottom and at least 100 mil, but I'd recommend 125 mil at the top or uh, three inches here and five inches here. And of course, depending on the chisels you're using, how, how long this bit needs to be. The second dimension is, now with a, a big fatter chisel like this, I'd say you want about 75 mil of length of roll per chisel. With smaller, finer or an orinomi, um, you might get away with only 50 mil, two, you know, two inches, uh, but, I, I, it's better to have a little bit extra than not enough. Oh, and you want a bit extra on top of whatever you're allowing for the roll. So let's say I've got five, I want to put, I do a five chisel roll and I've got five chisels, five atsunomi. Then I would say, well, five times three, that's 15 inches. And then about another five inches of, of overlap. So 20 inches which translating out of Colonial is about 500 mil. So, if I want 500 mil of length, it looks like I'm gonna get enough length out of the width of this piece. So that means that my first cut is gonna be to clear this edge up. So I reckon, I reckon we're gonna cut through there. Now let's see how well this leather knife works. Oh, <laughs> pretty damn well. Look at that. I mucked up here a little bit, went offline. And do you see how, how well that knife just glided through the leather? If you are shaving your arm hair, you're just getting your edge sharp. If it can shave your beard or your head, then it's really sharp. Not that I recommend shaving your head, or your beard for that matter. It's just, you know, it's a good test. All right, once we've cut the main body, we need to cut some straps. So I would recommend uh, about 20 mil. You could, you could go in, I wouldn't go less than 20 mil, maybe an inch, 25 mil. 
Now I've got the flesh side is going to be the inside of the roll. And also this little bit of extra here that's sort of hanging over, I want that to be part of the wrap that goes around the chisel roll. So this bit where it's a bit shorter, that's going to be, this is going to be the bottom. Three inches or 75 mil. So I'm just going to put a little nick there. Over this way. And put a little nick there. Not trying to cut anything, just trying to mark the leather. You know, if you didn't want to cut the leather, you could probably use a, a pencil or something. So where's our mark there? So we'll get that fold in place and then use something to hold it. I uh, happen to have a convenient sharpening stone here. If you're interested, this is one of the natural sharpening stones that I did a video on how to make. And this is the one I'm giving away. If you're interested, you go check that video out. Giving that away, announcing who gets that on the 15th of October. Now, so that's in place. Now they've got that fold there, you need to secure it. Now previously when I've done these, I've used uh, the copper rivets. Now I said this was going to be the simplest, easiest way to make a chisel wrap, so I'm not going to use the solid copper rivet, because you, know, you, you probably don't have solid copper rivets and you might not know how to install a solid rivet. I'm going to show you a much simpler way, but anything that will hold the two pieces of leather together will do. There's those cheap uh, press stud rivets, they're not very strong, but they're very cheap, they're very easy to install. Uh, the split copper rivets, which again are very easy to install, they look a bit ugly, although they are incredibly strong. Uh, you could sew it, even if you don't have leather working tools, a little bit of faffing around, you could do a, a bunch of stitches to secure it, and it might not look great, but it would do the job. Um, but anyway, I'm going to show you a really simple way. Not the best way, the best way is the solid copper rivet, but this way is really easy because you don't need anything extra in order to do the job. Now you've got that held in place there, you want to come in from the edge, you know, about 15 mil. What's nice and convenient with this um, square is I'll just use the inside corner. And you want to go down slightly more than the width of your strap. So we've got 5, 10, 15, 20, so about there. All right. Come in about 10 mil. If this chisel is the, our, our first chisel, because it's, it's quite thick, need to allow a reasonable amount of room for the pocket. So even though it's, I think it's a, what is it? 18 mil chisel. We're gonna allow 30 mil. 10, 20, 30. So 30, and then we'll move our square over. And mark the next point. But now I'm not sure how clear that is on your screen as I'm filming. Before we cut, we just want to make sure that we've got those holes going all the way through. Now an easy way to make these cuts is to just use a chisel. Just gotta be careful though, because there is a tendency for the leather to move. So, and that's why we've got the holes, because they help us reference it in the right spot. Cool. All right. Now for the threading. Now you can make this process easier by putting a little tail on your on your strap. Just a little one. And come in from the underside and go through there. Both of those. And then through both of those. And then back again. And then
just give us a little bit extra and back through both again. Cool. All right. Now for this one, you go over the back piece and then through here. Through these two. And there's your first pocket for your first chisel. Hmm. Now, you often see uh, commercial ones. This is a, a commercial Japanese one. And they're like so. They've got a, a line of pockets up top and bottom. Uh, I really don't like them because they, the chisels are free to wag around. And then this happens. So you're really not ideal. And it's the reason I did this design. Because the next thing we need to do now the process for doing the top strap is pretty similar. You mark out where the slits need to be for the top strap lining up with the slits on the bottom. The only difference is because it's a single layer of leather, you need an extra slit over here. Then the threading process, through there, through there, now going, uh, missing this slot here, but come up through this slot. and then back through there. All right, and because this is the strap that's gonna be going all the, all the way along, we've gotta make sure it comes all the way through. So put it, there we go. Cool, I'm done, and that, is the first pocket for the first chisel. Now I'm not gonna continue with this one, instead I'm gonna show you another one that I made for myself, and that's this one that I made a while ago. Here it is, this one you can see I've used the rivets. I do recommend the rivets if you know what you're doing when it comes to installing rivets, because having that flap secured at either end is uh, better. Makes it, it makes it easier to put, these, uh, put the straps and the holes in place, keeps the whole thing neater. Also means you need less room here to install the straps if you can rivet them or sew them or whatever. But you know the reason I did the video is simplest was to show you a way how to do it without the extra tools and equipment and hardware that's involved with, with rivets. So if you can do the rivets, do it, but it's not essential. Second thing I uh, wanna talk to you about this one is the overlap, because you might've been thinking five inches was excessive. This one uh, has, I think, 400 mil. No, it has five, right. When I bring that over, because of the odd shape of the chisels and how it folds and is all squivvy, when you're rolling it up, there's a tendency for this to happen. And then that to go like that. Now with a full five inches of overlap, I can roll this and keep pulling it in and it will stay in and it means that the chisels will stay in the roll. There's no chance of them falling out. A little bit of extra length on the on the overlap, on the on the fold, and it makes the whole thing work that much better. One of the reasons I'm not going to finish this one is because I don't want to finish it until I've got the chisels in place. That brings me back to you guys. Now I'm currently organizing a group buy of chisels from a smith in Japan. Short and curly of it is that the more people that jump on board, the cheaper the chisels are going to be, and the people who jump on board the soonest get uh, a bigger share of the discount. Uh, there's a video I did where I announced it, which is up there somewhere, but there's all the uh, other information you can find in the links in the description below. When you do, you'll see that there are two columns for the pricing. One column for boxed and one for bare. The bare chisels just come in a plastic wrap. And for me, for my chisels, I want the bare ones because I'm, I don't want to pay the extra money for the box. For you, you might be different. You might want the box 
Personally though, I'd recommend either you make your own box or now that I've shown you how simple it is to make a leather wrap or a canvas wrap or whatever you're gonna to use to make a wrap, a wrap for your chisels because the, the price difference is pretty significant. Also, to add some extra incentive to get some more people into the group buy, I'm gonna be giving one of the people who orders a set of chisels one of these leather wraps. And that's why I've left this chisel wrap unfinished because I'm not gonna finish it until I've got the chisels in hand to make the pockets the right width. So if that's something that interests you, you've got until the 15th of October. Like I said, the more people that jump on board, the cheaper the chisels get, uh, which means that if you are interested, you don't wanna just order your own set, but you wanna share it with other people who might be interested because the more people, the cheaper the chisels get. Other than that, I will hope you've enjoyed, hope you find this useful and um, I'll see you guys in the next video. So yeah, have fun, catch you later. The white steel, and this, you know, white steel of the tools means that you can get them incredibly, incredibly sharp, but then the super hardness to which they temper the blades to means they stay sharp for longer. But that means that they also bristle. So you only, with Japanese tools, cut down and cut along. No wiggles, no lateral movement, no levering, because if you do, then you can chip your blade. Oh, coffee! Thank you, dearest. Does that mean I was cutting your hair wrong? Was I holding the angle of the blade right? I'm too short to be in the video. Oh, you probably are too short. See? Look at that. Who's <laughs> Sarah? Just here. Just, just, there's, there's the top of Sarah's head. <laughs> you... You are too short. Okay, let me let me re, let me let me let me get you back in shot. There you go. You come back in shot. There you go. That's back in shot. There you go. <laughs> now see, look at look at the chips in that blade. Look what I did. Oh, what were you doing? I was being silly. Fortunately, I've sort of hit one of my dog holes in my bench just there. Ah! Oh no! Crap! Oh. I'm gonna have to re completely redo that. And you tell me off for my knives. Yes, I do tell you off for your, for your knives that you get me to sharpen because then you'd make them look like that all the way along. Let, let, let's show the viewers one of the knives. Bloody serrated Yana Geep, it just, 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 it just. Oh well. Like a cross. Don't you oh well me. Thanks for the coffee, go away.